Linear Calipers Introduction Vernier Calipers is an instrument having better precision than an ordinary scale. It was devised in 1931 by Pierre Vernier, 1584 to 1638, a French mathematician and engineer. In it, a small auxiliary scale called the Vernier scale is slided alongside an ordinary scale called the main scale. It has two pairs of calipers. The lower calipers A and B, also called jaws, are for measuring outer dimensions, such as the diameter of a sphere, or the outer diameter of a pipe. The upper calipers C and D, also called ears, are for measuring inner dimensions, such as the inner diameter of a pipe. In this experiment, we are going to make measurements of length of different objects using this instrument. Aim To find the volume of a sphere and a hollow cylinder using vernier calipers. Apparatus Vernier calipers A small spherical body A hollow cylinder Procedure let us first determine the least count of the instrument, that is, vernier calipers. Least count of any instrument is the smallest measurable quantity using it. The least count of vernier calipers is defined as Least count LC is equal to Value of one division on the main scale M Upon number of divisions on vernier scale N Let us carefully observe the main scale. Can you tell what is the smallest division on the main scale? It is 1 mm or 0.1 cm. Note it as the first observation. Observations 1. Value of one division on the main scale M is equal to 0.1 cm. Now look at the vernier scale and count the number of divisions on it. There are 10 divisions on the vernier scale. Note this as your second observation as 2. Number of divisions on the vernier scale n is equal to 10. 3. Hence the least count of the vernier calipers LC is equal to m upon n is equal to 0.1 cm upon 10 is equal to 0.01 cm. Hence, using this instrument, we can make measurements of length accurate to 0.01 cm or 100th of a cm. For the measurements to be accurate, the instruments should be devoid of any error. Let us check whether the given vernier calipers has any zero error. When the calipers is closed completely, the zero mark on the vernier scale should coincide with the zero of the main scale. If they are coinciding, one can say the instrument has no zero error. But if they are not coinciding, then there can be two types of error depending upon the position of the zeroth line of the vernier scale relative to the main scale. If zero of the vernier scale is on the right of the zero of the main scale, then the error in the instrument is said to be positive. If xth line of the vernier scale coincides with a line on the main scale, then the positive zero error z is given by z is equal to plus x into lc. If zero of the vernier scale is on the left of the zero of the main scale, then the error in the instrument is said to be negative. If yth line of the vernier scale coincides with a line on the main scale, then the negative zero error z is given by z is equal to minus n minus y into LC where N is the number of divisions on vernier scale. The observed reading is corrected by applying formula. Correct reading is equal to observed reading minus zero error. Let us now slide the vernier scale so that the calipers are completely closed. Check the position of zero line of the vernier relative to the position of the zero line on the main scale. Are the two lines coinciding? 
No. Can you tell the type of the error involved? Well, the zero line of the vernier scale is on the right side or positive side of the zero line on the main scale. Hence, the error is positive. Here, the second line of the vernier coincides with the one of the line on the main scale. Hence, the positive zero error is Z is equal to plus X into LC or Z is equal to plus 2 into 0 0.01 centimeter or Z is equal to plus 0 0.02 centimeter. Any measurement using this vernier calipers will excess by this amount. Hence, the corrected reading is obtained by reducing the measured value by this amount. Now, let us make the measurements of the outer diameter of a sphere and inner and outer diameter and length of a hollow cylinder and tabulate the readings. For this, let us draw a table with column names dimension, observation number, main scale reading A in centimeter, coincident vernier scale division B, vernier scale reading C is equal to B into LC centimeter, total reading A plus C centimeter and correct reading A plus C minus Z centimeter. Now we are going to measure diameter of the sphere. Write diameter of sphere in column dimension. Open the jaws of the calipers and hold the sphere in between the jaws. Push the thumb wheel with the thumb. Note the position of the zero mark of the vernier scale on the vernier scale on the main scale. It is between 1.6 cm and 1.7 cm indicating the diameter of the sphere is more than 1.6 cm. This is the main scale reading A recorded in the corresponding column. Now observe carefully the lines on the vernier scale. One of the line coincides with a line on the main scale. Here fourth line coincides with a line on the main scale. This is the coincident vernier scale division B. Record in the observation table. The vernier scale reading C is given by formula C is equal to B into LC. Hence C is equal to 4 into 0 0.01 centimeter is equal to 0 0.04 centimeter. The total reading is A plus C which is equal to 1.6 plus 0 0.04 centimeter is equal to 1.64 centimeter. The correct reading is given by A plus C minus Z is equal to 1.64 minus 0 0.02 is equal to 1.62 centimeter. Let us take five independent readings along different diametrical directions of the sphere. Tabulate all observations. Let us now measure the inner and outer diameters of a hollow cylinder. For the measurement of inner diameter D2, ears C and D of the vernier calipers are used. Hold the upper calipers C and D inside the hollow cylinder and pull out the thumb wheel with thumb. Take the observations of the inner diameter. Tabulate the readings. Similarly, take observation for outer diameter and length of the hollow cylinder. Calculations. 1. Volume of the sphere. Let us find the corrected mean diameter of the sphere. D is equal to 1.62 plus 1.60 plus 1.64 plus 1.61 plus 1.63 upon 5 or D is equal to 1.62 centimeter. Therefore, the radius of the sphere is R is equal to D upon 2 is equal to 1.62 upon 2 is equal to 0.81 centimeter. Hence, volume of the sphere V is equal to 4 upon 3 
pi r cube is equal to 4 upon 3 into 3.142 into 0 0.81 cube. Therefore, V is equal to antilog log 4 plus log 3.142 plus 3 into log 0 0.81 minus log 3 is equal to antilog 0 0.6021 plus 0 0.4972 plus 3 into bar 1.9085 minus 0 0.4771 is equal to antilog 0 0.8248 minus 0 0.4771 is equal to antilog 0 0.3477 therefore V is equal to 2.226 hence the volume of the sphere is equal to 2.23 centimeter cube correct to two decimals Volume of a hollow cylinder. Let us first find the mean outer and inner diameters of the cylinder. Outer diameter D1 is equal to 1.81 plus 1.83 plus 1.82 plus 1.84 plus 1.80 upon 5 is equal to 1.82 centimeter. Inner diameter D2 is equal to 1.63 plus 1.61 plus 1.60 plus 1.62 plus 1.64 upon 5 is equal to 1.62 centimeter. Therefore, the inner and outer radii R1 and R2 are R1 is equal to D1 upon 2 is equal to 1.82 upon 2 is equal to 0.91 cm R2 is equal to D2 upon 2 is equal to 1.62 upon 2 is equal to 0.81 cm The mean value of the length of the cylinder is L is equal to 4.41 plus 4.43 plus 4.41 plus 4.45 plus 4.40 upon 5 is equal to 4.42 centimeters. Now, volume of the hollow cylinder is equal to pi r2 square minus r1 square L. Hence, volume of the hollow cylinder is equal to 3.142 into 0 0.91 square minus 0 0.81 square into 4.42 is equal to 1.72 centimeter cube. Now, let us write the results of the experiment. Results 1. Volume of the sphere is equal to 2.23 cm cube. 2. Volume of the hollow cylinder is equal to 1.72 cm cube. Notes and precautions 1. The zero error is subtracted algebraically in either case, positive and negative zero error. 2. While taking a reading, the thumb must be on the thumb wheel, pushing in for outer dimensions and pulling out for inner dimensions. 3. If required, use a magnifying glass to see the coincident vernier scale division. 4. Take several readings at different positions of an object. 5. Express the result in the correct number of significant figures.